Hey, hello friends. Welcome to Tribeca Designs. My name is Rebecca and I love to sew. I am very excited about today's video. I am going to be sharing, I'm going to open the vault. <laughs> I'm a little giddy today, pardon me. I'm opening the vault of my most prized treasure and showing you guys my top 10 most rare find, unique or original, super special vintage patterns. <laughs> so you guys may have heard me say on some of my previous videos that I don't purchase new patterns. <gasps> Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> oh, the horror! Gasp! Anyway, um... <laughs> now, before you go judging, don't come for me in the comments for saying that. There's a good reason why I have not purchased any new patterns in about 15 years. No, 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 wait, let me backtrack. I think it's been more like 12 years to be exact. The reason why is because when my grandmother passed, I inherited all of her patterns. She had many friends, uh, sewing friends, and some of them did not have uh, family members who were interested in sewing and I inherited their patterns. They thought enough of me to call me over to their homes and give me all of their sewing supplies, which just really touched my heart. And I have not had the opportunity to sew most of those patterns that were gifted to me. And I kind of made a vow to myself that I would not let them go to waste since they entrusted me with something that they really cared a lot about. I said I wouldn't, you know, I would use them. And so I've been trying to do that. And so that's one reason why I have not bought any of the big four patterns, which is what I was accustomed to purchasing um, when I started sewing back in the 80s. Yeah, 80s. Um, I was a kid, but, you know, I was sewing, okay? Um, so, and then moving forward, even like 12 years ago, 15 years ago, when I was still into purchasing commercial patterns, I would, I had begun to notice there were a lot of repeats. Um, sometimes they changed the number, but it was the same pattern. Sometimes they changed the model or just a little, little small detail, but it was basically the same pattern. And as I began to thumb through my vintage patterns, I just, you know, begin to see some, you know, remakes and I just, I just didn't, I wasn't inspired anymore. I'm not gonna, um, sugarcoat that. There was a time when, you know, I just wasn't inspired by the patterns that I was familiar with. Since then, I understand there's many, many um, indie pattern designers. And it took me a while to figure out that indie meant individual. I was just like so out of the loop with all that stuff that I didn't even realize that's what indie meant. Um, and so there's all kind of PDF patterns online and pattern companies. And things are just different now than they were even, you know, 12 uh, plus years ago. So I am going to share with you guys my top 10 doot, 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 most unusual patterns. And I'm just going to go ahead and jump right in. Come along. Okay. So what I have done here is pulled this stack of patterns and I'm going to start with the one that has the earliest date on it. I think I already have these in order. Okay, so we're going to go back to 1954. And this is the pattern that I would like to share with you guys. It is a Vogue Couture design. And what I find really interest, interesting about this is that the number is the way the number is printed on here, it's almost easy to miss this as the pattern number, but that is the pattern number 809. 
the original price from 1954 for this pattern was $2. Um, another great feature about this particular vintage pattern is that you could go to the counter where you pick this pattern up at and ask them for the label. It says it right there. Ask for this label at the counter. And they would give you the, the label to sew in the dress along with the pattern. Isn't that cool? Um, I actually made this dress. I made this dress in the 90s, early 90s. And oh my God, this thing is fabulous and fantastic. It is, I think it would be more for an intermediate um, seamstress. So as someone who um, is, is beyond uh, a beginner, um, maybe even beyond an advanced beginner, from what I remember, uh, this portion was... Um, maybe a little bit more advanced to do. I wish I had this dress still to show you all. And I don't know if you can see by the line. Oh, check out that pocket. You know, I Googled this to see if I could pick up this pattern online. And someone had recently sold one on Etsy and they wanted like some astronomical amount of money for it. It was over $100. And beyond that, I have not been able to find it for purchase so if you have this you have a treasure honey hold on to it let's open it up and see okay you guys ooh, this gets me so excited i just love vintage things maybe it's because of all the time i spent with my grandmother but if you look at the pattern pieces they have no ink lines no drawings no names no, nothing. Now, I don't know if you will be able to see it, but I'm going to try to let you guys see this. Can you see here where it's perforated? Uh, it says skirt front. Maybe if I put a black um, behind it, maybe then you can see it. I don't know. Oh, yeah, maybe you can see that. So that's how all of the markings are placed on this pattern. You can see these are like uh, dots for uh, darts here. And all these little circles, they're all over the place. They all mean something. So I don't know if any of you guys um, have any patterns like this in your possession. Let me know in the comments below. I would love to know. Um, but yeah, all, all of the pattern pieces are here. But if you looked at it, you would just think it's tissue paper because, again, there's no um, markings, no ink markings. Now here, this says sleeve. I hope you guys can see that right there. Let me put a black behind it, a black. um. So yeah, can you see that now? It says sleeve. <laughs> I love it. And so all... That's all of the wording, if you will. Um, oh gosh, I just ripped into it. I, I, they're very fragile. I do need to, um, I find myself taping these in places all the time because in handling them sometime, if I'm not careful, I will rip them. But um, let's take a quick look at the guide sheet. And again, even as I'm opening this up, the page is kind of tearing. You see how cumbersome these instructions are? That's why I said this is more for an intermediate or advanced seamstress. Um, yeah, it, especially because also there are no markings on the pattern pieces. I'm going to make this again. And I, I want you guys to see how fabulous this thing. This is, this is couture. This is couture. Um, but I love Vogue. Um, Vogue has always been my personal favorite of um the big four and so okay let me move on because i can get a little chatty <laughs> okay now this next one whoo, is so special you guys and i i i, I just oh okay let me calm down I'm, I'm gonna save that one this is not the special one okay this is special but that's not what I was tripping on a minute ago. So this is another pattern from, I think, the 50s. 
bear with me. I wrote it here somewhere because I, oh no, this was from the 60s, 1960s. It must have been, oh yeah, I can see this because this, this hairdo right here, this big old, my grandmother used to have one of these. She used to call them a fall. <laughs> it was this bump she would put in her hair to make it come up here and then come down and then swoop up in the back. <laughs> yeah, okay. 60s. Um, she has lots of photos of her. She and my grandfather used to go to these magnificent balls and she would make all of these lovely gowns every year to wear. She had many photos. Of course, I wasn't around in the 60s, but um, I'm sure this is one I inherited from my grandmother. The one I just showed you, actually that first one I showed you, I picked up in an estate sale. I had purchased a whole lot of sewing supplies from a lady who had passed. They had an estate sale for her and I was there several years ago and um, she was a seamstress and I purchased a lot of her stuff. So anyway, this one come from my gammy and it's also a Vogue Couture design. See how they would put that in blue at the top. You've probably seen these. I think this one you can find online. Original price was $5. This designer's name is Pertigas. Pertigath. This looks like how they want you to pronounce it. If you look at that, it looks like Pertigath. Pardon me if I'm saying it incorrectly. Someone else out there may know. This is another one that I have actually made. It has these. If you can look at this line drawing. Oh my God, this thing is fabulous. And um, the model, if you can look at the details there. It's another one where you could have picked up the, the tag at the counter where you purchased it. But it comes with the top, the jacket, and the skirt. And um, whew, I actually, I may have photos somewhere back in my analog photo collection, not my digital photo collection, of, of uh, one of my mannequins in this. But... Um, Let's take a look at the guide sheet to see if there's anything special. Now, again, this is from the 60s, so there, there are a lot of uh, all of your markings and, and your lines and your identification uh, aspects of the pattern are here on this on this uh, tissue. But uh, this is another one I would say would be for more for intermediate or advanced sewist. Uh, it has quite a few pattern pieces, but um, if you follow the guide sheet, uh, the instructions are very clear. It is not, in my opinion, difficult to put together. But I just like looking at these old guide sheets. I like looking at the difference in the print. The um, illustration key at the top typically is still pretty standard in comparison to what they do now. Um, I personally have never purchased um, patterns, uh, PDF patterns, or patterns outside of the Big Four company. So I look forward to experiencing that in the future. Uh, kind of more as just like a research or a comparison aspect to see how I like it compared to what I've always been accustomed to. Okay, moving along here. I think I got these out of order now. I'm sorry. Let me go back to the 50s. <laughs> oh my goodness. How about this, you guys? <laughs> okay, isn't that June Cleaver? Doesn't that remind you of Leave it to Beaver? <laughs> I love this. I have never made this one. I think this one came from the estate sale that I told you about that I got the first one from because I don't think I inherited any patterns from my grandmother and her friends from the 50s. They were all sewing mad, like mad in the 60s, if I remember correctly, um, just because they started sewing later in their life than I did. Now, um, what are they calling this? They're calling this, uh, uh, they're calling this a jumper, okay? And then the skirt. And that's what you get in this pattern. I love these pockets. Did you check out these pockets? <laughs> and I love, girl, okay. First of all, where are her organs? There's barely enough room for a belt. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. Um, okay, um, I love the fit 
you know, fitted waist and then it's not really a flare. It's um, it's just, it loosely kind of skims. I don't know what you would call it. I don't know. Maybe you call it a fit and flare. But um, I just love that fit, that very elegant uh, look. So I want to make this one um, original price, 45 cents. And let's take a quick look at the guide sheet. Let's see if there's anything unique about it. Now, see, this one is from the 50s, too. Maybe it was just the Vogue that didn't run um, all of the prints on their pieces. But this is from the 50s, and it has all of the markings on the pieces. But anyways, um, maybe you guys wouldn't mind helping me decide which out of the top 10 I should make first. Or next. Oh my God, this skirt is a killer. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Ooh, my goodness. I love it. So, you know, I'm not seeing, I've not seen, because I really haven't looked in the pattern books lately, anything like any of these. And so, I would be willing to duplicate any of these. If someone is interested, um, I would duplicate it for a fee, depending on which one you choose. But I would do it at the current pattern pieces um, that I have here. And you would have to do any uh, size adjustments, grading, what have you on your own. So just in case someone sees something they like, they can't find it, I'd be willing to do that for you. Okay, this next one is also from the 50s. And isn't it the cutest? <laughs> now, I know a lot of people don't dress their children like this anymore, but I think this is adorable. It's a little kid's pattern. Um, what are they calling this? I don't know, but it even has the bonnet. It has the bonnet. And... um. Oh, I don't know. I didn't mean to show that. Um, the person's name that it, this belonged to is on the envelope. She wrote her name on the envelope. Um, but yeah, I think, oh, they call it a toddler's play suit with bonnet for girls. <laughs> and it is special. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I thought that maybe it didn't have the markings, but what is this? Oh, hmm. I wonder if the owner just did that or if it can. Th these pieces are wrapped in tissue. I don't know if that who if it came that way or if the person who owned it previously did that. But um, I just want to check. The, I haven't looked at the guide sheets for these in years. And so I just wanted to kind of look at the guide sheet to see if it had any unique features that stand out. And this looks pretty standard. It looks like something that um, is very comparable to the way instructions are on the guide sheets today. Like it would be very easy to follow. So gonna set this one back in the envelope and move on to the next now I couldn't do this video without giving a shout out to my male subscribers I have something for you guys as well <laughs> this is a men's shirt uh, and slacks patterns or you can also make the shorts. It is also from the 19... Wait, let me make sure I got that right. Oh, no. This was 1965. Copyright 1965. Um, it is a McCall's. I wonder... I haven't even tried to find this one online. I wonder if it will be available if I tried to, to find it. I need to preserve these because they're starting to kind of disintegrate the paper. And I have a way of doing that. But um, now, 
Drum roll, please. I am going to share something that I think is really, really special. I had never seen anything like this. And this is also something that came from an estate sale. Um, this is a mail order pattern from the Kansas City Star, which is a local newspaper here. Apparently, they had a section in the local paper where you could go and order patterns. And it says, Kansas City Star Times, and it says, be a clothes horse. And I uh, scratched out the lady's um, address who ordered this. But check this out. You guys have got to see this. First of all, she saved the newspaper clipping. Ah! <laughs> that is super cool. That is some history right there. So she saved the newspaper clipping. It says, quick jumpsuit. Printed pattern number 9244, sizes 6 through 20 by Miriam Martin. And it says, look closely. Few parts, fast sewing, fabulous fashion. Zip into everybody's favorite jumpsuit with dome, doming, doming, sorry, doming sleeves and patch pockets for any day of the hour. Perfect for jersey, homespun, or linen, send your request to printed pattern number 9244. And then it has all the details. I think that is super cool. So if we go ahead and open it up, there it is. This is what she saw in the paper. And this is what came in the mail. I love it. I mean, this is basically what you guys are doing now when you peruse the internet and you see a picture of a pattern you like and you just order it online. Same thing except for it was snail mail. But I never knew that that was an option for purchasing patterns through the local newspaper. I love it. Brand new, unused pattern. Mm, mm, mm. And all the pieces are um, cut out. Okay. That's how they would come. And, oh, this has a little color on the guide sheet, which I think is super cool. Just that little red border is everything. Okay, <laughs> so there it is, you guys. Oh, that, and that does look simple. I mean, if you look at that line drawing, honey, you, you need to add a little something to that bad boy to, to, to uh, spice it up. I mean, unless you really like, uh, oh, Ooh, they show you how to do bound buttonholes. Oh my gosh. And then they show you how to do hand-sewn buttonholes. I love that. If you look down there, they actually walk you through the process of doing hand-sewn buttonholes. And then the bound buttonhole instructions are up here. Super cool. I told you I have treasure. I have treasure. So why would anyone want to spend their money when they already have treasure? <laughs> okay, so I have a few like that. Um, here is another one. She wrote on here, February 1985. I don't know if that was the year she bought it or what. I don't know. I just didn't know in the 80s, but again, I was a kid uh, that you could, I never heard of anybody ordering patterns in the mail. I, I just don't even remember my grandmother ever doing that. But, um, oh, another one. She, oh, look at this. Now, this is why I love to thrift for sewing supplies, you guys. I'm a total sewing geek. I'll admit it. Maybe this doesn't get any of you excited. Let me know in the comments below, honey. Does anybody have a situation like this? Because, baby, ba -ba 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 -ba, this is some treasure. Okay, so again, we have a clipping of the ad she saw in the newspaper. And then this is what arrived in the mail. Now, this one actually has some blue ink to it. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, she didn't use this one either. Another completely new pattern, unused, and 
um, first place pattern winners. Oh, wow. They put some type of um, advertisement in here showing you some other, uh, you know, patterns that they considered, you know, popular or fashionable at the time, um, soliciting for you to purchase some of these other items. Wow. That, my friends, is fantastic. Whew. The times we live in. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, I'm so glad that I have these in my possession. And again, I don't want these things to just sit here and me not um, use them. It's not that I will never purchase new patterns again, but I have a personal... I guess, conviction that I should make the most of what I already have um, that I have not utilized, okay? All right, so this is another mail order. Um, it's called Laura Wheeler Designs, okay? But this one is very unique, okay? Let me explain why. Apparently, this came from Chicago, Illinois, this um, one says needle craft department. So when we open it up, we discover something very unique. Now, we have to be careful. <clears throat> Mama Jade over here, I bought her because she embroiders. And she's feeling some type of way toward me. Which she should. Because I have never utilized her full potential. In other words, I've never utilized the embroidery feature on my sewing machine. It's mainly because I'm too lazy to read the instructions and I just want to sew. <laughs> It's not, it's not her fault. So that being said, these patterns were um, for embroidery, okay? And I thought this was so cute. These are little um, um, guides for different type of embroidery you could put on your, your work. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. It says Laura Wheeler Embroidery Lines, pattern number 954. She's giving you all of the different instructions for the stitches. And these are the guides for all of the different embroidery you can put on your projects. I don't know if you guys really saw that, but um, this is interesting. I think you can you have to iron these lines on because as I'm feeling this, this is raised. This has got some type of a uh, raised situation. And I noticed that, yeah, it's printed backwards on here. So again, this is a, a function now that we use our Cricut makers for and the embroidery functions on our sewing machines for. And this is the old school way of doing it, you guys. I didn't even know that's what this was, okay? I thought it was a, a, a sewing pattern. So when I opened up this treasure, I was like, oh, I'm about to pass out. I just think that the old way of doing things is very um, interesting, very intriguing, and something that I personally um, like to explore and experience from time to time. Um, I love all of the new fangled... Um, machinery and tools that we have as well but anyway um this one um is anywhere from the late no the early 40s to the 1950s i had to google this and it says that laura wheeler's um, needlecraft work was produced in the 1940s and 50s so this 
is another treasure. I told you I had some unique ones. All right, before we go further, I'm going to go ahead and do a subscriber shout out. So let's shout out one of my subscribers. So I am very pleased to shout out Miss Helen Fields. Yes, Helen. You are today's subscriber shout out. I went back and looked at my very first video that I uploaded on my channel. And you, my dear, were the first person to comment on my first video. And because of that, I am going to gift you this vintage pattern from the 1970s. If you would like to receive it, go ahead and hit me up. Um, you can put a comment below or, well, in addition to that comment, you would need to um, send me an, an email. So I will put my email in the description below and you can email me with your mailing instructions and I will send you this um, pattern for free. Uh, let me give you the details. It is a size 16 by Buttrick. It's a C and so, and I would say this is a beginner's um, level pattern and I'm sending out a beginner's pattern because I don't know everyone's sewing level. So um, I thought this would be a nice one to send out. Um, yeah, it says sizes 8 through 16. Um, let me just give you a quick like bust range here. It says bust 31 through 38. Waist 24 through 30. Um, I do believe this is meant for a stretch knit. Um, so that's something to consider. But you can always use pattern pieces in various ways. So, congratulations to Miss Helen Fields. Um, let me know if you're interested in receiving this pattern. So, thank you for um, subscribing to my channel and for being a, a viewer who encourages me along my personal journey. So, I would like to encourage you on your personal sewing journey as well. All right, you guys, that was seven, maybe eight patterns. We've got three more to go. Let's go ahead and run through these really quick. Um, this one is from 1972. It's another mail order pattern. This says Ann Adams pattern. So this one, um, I don't know what paper or what uh, publication it was ordered out of. Um, but it wasn't the local newspaper. Um, it says that Ann Adams patterns were from New York. And um, this one came airmail. So, honey, this one was, you know, special. Mm -hmm. Oh, isn't that cute? Ooh. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Do y'all see the design on that? That is cute. And I think I have another pattern, kind of similar, another one of my vintage patterns. But, oh, my God. See, I, I don't know. Are they selling patterns with these kinds of designs in the big four right now? That, honey, mm, that deserves to be made. Brand new. Never used. Mm, 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 mm. I like the little uh, blue accents on the guide sheet just because it's not something that um, I've seen in the big four. I don't know what the indie patterns are, the, some of the ones that you can purchase online, some of the newer pattern lines, companies. I don't know if they have colors or, or what. Um, I don't know what their patterns look like, but I do want to explore, um, especially some of the, the gals from um, London that I've been watching, some of the other... Uh, content creators who sew from London. Uh, some of their pattern envelopes look really nice and um I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna branch out. I really am. Whew, okay, I'm about talked out here. Okay. Um last but not least, I just picked this up a few days ago in my local thrift shop. Ding! 
they had a whole stack of these patterns. Now, you guys, I need your help on this one because I have never seen anything like this. And they really don't seem to identify themselves under a particular name. I almost think maybe I should have picked all of them up because they were so unusual. And when I went back, they were gone. There was a whole stack of them um, at the thrift shop. Um, you can see I purchased it from Savers for 99 cents. I think this pattern though may be from the early 90s, but it's a great jacket. I love it. But it just says stadium jacket. Now there is this um, um emblem or whatever you want to call it right here. But I couldn't find any information on this pattern. Um, was this a pattern company? And how long were they around? And blah, blah, blah. And the crazy thing is, is there is no guide sheet. Oh, there sure isn't. I mean, I could figure out how to make it. That's not an issue for me, but um, there was no guide sheet in that one. I don't know if that's standard for this pattern company, but it's a brand new unused pattern. Um, my guess is that all of the pieces are here, but of course I don't know because I haven't gotten into it. But let me know, does anybody know anything about these patterns? Okay, guys, so that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed all of these vintage um, patterns. Let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite. And if you saw one that you might be interested in seeing me um, actually put together in a future video. Not sure when that's going to happen, but if I get, um, I'd say, anywhere from 10 or more um, requests for any particular pattern, then I will do that one. So be sure you guys and put your request in for your fave. Thanks for watching. Peace and blessings.